Hello there, I'm Super, or Seth. I am joined by some of the Sonic's Rainbow Six Siege players, Citizen and Grixer, and the CEO of the Sonic's, Darren. And I guess we're doing a podcast or something like that where we are just talking all kinds of Siege and whatever may arise from that topic. Well, I mean, just anything Siege. I was actually wanted to start off with our shoe game. Well, I, I think we've got a very... Games. On this couch, we have a very distinctive array of shoes. A little bit of everything. We've got people who work. Yeah. People who don't. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody goes to work in those. Yeah. I know people can't. Can you see the shoes on the cam? I think, can we get a shoe shot? We've got slides and socks, which is criminal. But he has lost his... Ben's luggage hasn't arrived yet, so... I have cowboy boots. I'll have those of you who are Yellowstone, Yellowstone fans know... These are actually the same boots that Rip Wheeler wears on Yellowstone. Is that why you bought them? That's why you bought them. I saw them, I thought they looked good. You, <laughs> you see, did. if you get real close, there's like a little kind of, I wouldn't say it's like a cross, it is a cross. but it's like, I just like how it looks. Can I see the top off of them? How long? Oh, they got a crazy oh. design. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, they go all the way up. Yeah. Okay, that's how we roll. I need me some of those for my So, yeah, this is a <laughs> podcast about Rainbow Six Siege. And shoes. And shoes and <laughs> boots, if you don't count cowboy boots as shoes. All right. John, I don't know how to say that. How would you say that, mate? I said Yonko Ping in the Twitter video. Yonko Ping? Yonko Ping. Yonko Ping? All right. The Sweden major. The Swedish yeah, major. Yeah. So stay with the Swedish the major. The second Swedish the major. The second one. Were you all there? I didn't watch. I didn't I, I actually didn't. know. but Oh, not? technically of us, only Pablo was there. Oh, were you not there? Oh. They didn't qualify. Oh. Yeah. That. So that's our talk about the <laughs> major. <laughs> okay, no, real. Have you been to Sweden before, Ben? No. Nah. No, good. It's terrible. Wait, what? It's, I don't know how you have not been I, to Sweden because I feel like I've been to Sweden <laughs> like half the year. What did you like about Sweden, Pablo? No, nothing. Nothing? No. They have air conditioning there, which was better that's than true. Berlin. They did have Berlin. Instead of Berlin. Dude, nothing about it Sweden. It was, no, we, we didn't do anything. We were. COVID. Yeah, I've been to Sweden. I love it was Sweden. prime COVID, so we couldn't do anything. Well, when you went there just now, were you, well, there it was like a blizzard when you were there. Yeah, it was just snowing. It was literally a, an actual blizzard. Last time I went to Sweden, it was, so, it was like 8 and 90 degrees. And they didn't have air conditioning. The arena wow. was so hot. I, I think 12 or so PCs melted. I don't know how people live without air conditioning. Uh, well, as me and Ben are both from the Isle of... You know, Britain, we don't have Berlin, Mr. Berlin. I mean, I guess it depends where you live, because if the weather is, like, moderate, you're fine. But if it's, like, you live in a hot place or a cold place, it's probably pretty, pretty not fun. All right, well, let's, let, let's go on to air conditioning, because you, you'll start having, like, I'll, relapses. Yes. You'll have to get the towel out and put it back over your head. Yep. And just... <laughs> yeah, that was insane. I just watched Seth slowly His skate down. came off of his mouse. <laughs> that's, when you, that's when I knew it was bad. That's when I knew it was, like, holy... What was that like for your final game, though? It was your final game in Sweden, Yeah, right? that was miserable. That was Berlin, it was your final game. And Berlin, Berlin yes. And Berlin was the worst event I've ever been to. So it was good to close out on that. I thought it was a fitting <laughs> note. My entire career, Just, the worst event I've ever been to. What was the best event you've ever been to? Honestly, it's tough to say it's an event because, uh, like... There was COVID, but the SI that we played at was like actually like really well handled. Like well, Paris, no, not oh, Paris, Sweden, the Sweden no. one for COVID. Yeah. It was like really well prepared. You could go in there anytime. They always had like buffet food. Mm -hmm. They like it was like you could tell it was like SI is like more important. So it like that was really well ran, but it was kind of like obviously shitty that you know there's no fans or anything. Yeah, that was the best for sure. The food there was great. When was the last time you played in front of fans? Was it US Nationals when they were like Yeah, when they were saying Sonics relegated. <laughs> or like, I think they were like fuck you super. They definitely I remember that. I was yeah. in the crowd. Yeah. So that <laughs> was the last time I played in front of fans was them chanting fuck you super. So that what, was, a great, what a great yeah, way to go. Yeah. What a storied career this yeah. young man had. <laughs> Just hated. So we got back for our, I know a lot of you did a video on this on Twitter the other day. Uh, we covered it briefly, but we got, I remember this because you guys got back from Sweden and I was like, oh, well, you know, we're trending upwards. We got top yep. four. And then I get a message from you. I don't know what time it was. It was just our Discord message saying, hey, we're going to need to replace Kansan. And I just remember just going, 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we had, I mean, you and I had no plans on replacing no, Jansen. No. We didn't know anything about it, um, especially because our team was seemingly uh, on the rise there. That was our best international placing we've had, even higher an invite. Um, but, yeah, obviously that occurred, um, and we had to start looking for players. Yep. Now, I know there's like a, uh, there's questions about why, I guess, Kansan was benched, because obviously you wouldn't say it's for Performance. like performance-related issues. And I've also seen like some crazy speculation, like he did something illegal or he got in trouble. Like, did he? No, no. Not that uh, I know uh, of. He may have after he found out he got benched, <laughs> but no, not that I know of. Um, uh, but from, you know, obviously, Pablo, you can touch on it since you were part of the team that made that you decision. You are the team captain after all. Yes, you are. You have been handed down the, the honor of being the Sonics captain. Yeah, I mean, none of it was planned. I feel like that's also some speculation that went around, like that there was some master plan that, uh, you know, we had a, an idea to drop cans in, like before the major, after the major, anything like that. It was definitely more of like a spontaneous idea. You know, it wasn't planned for any of us, but um, the team, the team wanted, or they, they, they saw the team that it was like a better direction for like the future of the roster. And um, gonna finally stop shaking. Yeah. <laughs> and we wanted to head into SI, you know, with uh, the strongest roster we possibly could. So this guy came along. Well, that was actually a funny story because we were me and I was like Seth, who the hell? Like, Hans has been one of our better performers. Who are we gonna like? We're going to replace Kansan with who? You know, Yeah. I remember, I actually remember a, a few months before Seth had come to me with the reality TV roster and said to keep an eye on them. Yep. Um, I know you really liked Gaveni because Gaveni was kind of... We actually had conversations with them. Um, I don't know if this would ever have happened because obviously Ubisoft would have to approve stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to sign that roster before the CL even started, really, to an academy contract um, to where they would all essentially be, you know, if the situation like Kansan getting benched did come up, we could bring somebody up from the academy team. Um, obviously, that never went anywhere. But, yeah, those guys were on our radar, and we did try out two of them. Obviously, Gavini had already been um, signed by Dark Zero. Yeah. Paul Gavini. Yeah, that's unfortunate <laughs> for him. He's, hey, he's allowed to have trust for them. That is true. <laughs> he's revisiting his day. He's revisiting his I'm days sorry. in uh, first grade. That's toxic. That is toxic. That was funny. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we we obviously trialed Mr. B and Tristan. And You're a big Mr. B sit fan, deep down. Aren't I you? like I like Mr. B because like he's too. like a worse version of me. I've, I feel like you know when like players like retire in sports games, it's like a regen model of them. I think yeah. is that where you retired and then... he's like a less smart. Slightly he's, better aim. He's, he's a, a, a younger, a younger yeah, embodiment. You've got two Seth. knees on him. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally Seth in like a younger version. Yeah, he's not mature, not as smart Seth. But he is British. Yeah. Does he well, have? Does he? Does he have a British accent? I've never heard him speak. No. On no some, like on yeah. some words, like very slightly. No, okay, he, he doesn't sound like he's, he's more American than British, but he makes out that he's British. Like, <laughs> he can't, he's got to take that away then. <laughs> so yeah, no, we did. We I remember you, um, we we had a list, and I was like, the tryouts. And I was I was jumping in Discord and watching the tryouts every now and again to listen to the team. And I know we tried out Tristan, yeah, uh, Mr. B, Hyper. Am I missing any? Eclipse, Eclipse, Eclipse as well. Yeah, he, Eclipse. Obviously, like he was just too. He was too used to playing with Canadian. Yeah, like he was just like too slow to be on our team. I think like the DZ playstyle just took over that. No guy. one had a headband. Yeah, we didn't have, we weren't playing uh, Eminem, not afraid, <laughs> and he didn't know how to react. So uh, um, the way it works in 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 in, 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 in siege on the org side is if you are thinking about selling a player or want to gauge interest in player you, uh, in in your players um, to stop poaching and stuff, you can just tell. Ubisoft and they'll send out an email to all orgs and I remember we got one about Citizen a while back it wasn't it was quite a while, a while back wasn't it it was so we were contacted by G2 about Citizen among others like during the major basically right. obviously 
Um, I think I even mentioned it to you because uh, I don't know if you remember, but when I was like going to retire, because I had been trying to retire forever, and I just you did try. You were literally forced to keep playing. Yeah, Yeah. So like, I mentioned that we could get citizen because also, obviously, from an org standpoint, we needed upgrade. Yeah, well, an upgrade, but also just like somebody who um, I guess you would say is more popular with people just because obviously me leaving the team is, um, you know, I'm kind of a, you know, people know me kind of thing. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) (laughs) this is an Anchorman quote. Yeah. But I'm kind of a big deal. Yeah. (laughs) But I mean, I just thought it was funny that it kind of resurfaced because they basically laughed at us when we asked about it. I remember that. Yeah. I mean, I thought you were, it was a, a bold move to even ask. Yeah. Because like, I was like, we were still a small Sonic, you know, yeah. Sonic like, pretty small back then. Small club. Really? Small club syndrome. I'd be curious, Ben, um, <clears throat> what do you think, because this was like early, so obviously originally I was planning to retire after invite, and then I kind of stuck around for a few more months. What do you think in like your eyes, whether it's for you or for G2, do you think changed that they were willing to like, have a conversation with us, but because before uh, the, we couldn't even like, it was like a five second call. Like it was just, it wasn't even a call. Yeah. I was just like, no, <laughs> <Wasn't it? laughs> well, before I, was, I think the first time is I did say no, just cause of, uh, the team that they were making, they were making like with LML and Prano and that. So that's what like kept me in. Otherwise I would have left at that point, but it's kind of the decision that I took and regretted in the future. And then that's why when I saw I got a second chance of being able to join, I kind of took it straight away and made sure that I was able to join. I mean, I remember when, when it came up and I was like, obviously it'd be great to sign it. And I'd, I'd already put my checkbook away. Yeah. I was like, Seth, please. I mean, if you think about it, we kept the two best players from the original team uh-huh. and then just bought out other people. You already said that we're like the Mets now because so, we just, and Siege, because we just go and get whoever. Do the Mets win? Won. They don't win, but oh. they have a lot of good players. <laughs> XA, I'm so excited now. <laughs> <laughs> we're the Mets. <laughs> Ambassadors, if you're listening, we're the Mets. <laughs> no trophies, but great players. Yeah. Um, so, what, Ben, obviously, we both come from the UK. Do you, you find it scary moving to America? It's a, bit, it's, a big, it's a big culture change, to be fair. Yeah. I mean... I know I think, you've only just got it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got experience though from moving to Germany, so I know what like the mistakes I shouldn't make when crossing to a different country. And also, I think bringing my girlfriend is a big thing as well, because I think moving out here alone and spending, it, spending a, a lot of time alone would be kind of a hard thing for me to deal with, especially moving away from like your family and your pets and all sorts as well. So I'm making sure that I'm making the right choices and the right moves so I don't get lonely and I enjoy my time. Yeah, I was. Uh, he could always hang out with Luke, which might make him wish. Luke he was AP though, <laughs> AP is fun. AP is fun, but if you hang out with Luke, you'd probably rather be lonely. Luke's fun. I like Luke. <laughs> Luke, Luke throws shapes in the clubs, bro. You, you've seen okay. him. I've you've seen been him at the clubs with Luke. You've seen him go. <laughs> you've seen him go at a, the Megan the Stallion concert. Yeah, I didn't know. A, I didn't know a grown man could move so fast. <laughs> That was me leaving. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Like, yeah. like it was the worst concert eh. I've ever eh. been to in my life. I was like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> so obviously we ended up with this team now, which I think um, Seth's right to saying is probably the strongest on paper roster that we've... Oh, I'm, I mean, on, you, know, you know, not to uh, kind of hype ourselves up, but I think just on paper, it's probably one of the best rosters Siege has had. Just obviously it's more to do... It has to translate to the game, but in terms of the players, you know, we have a world champion, one of the best rookie players in the world, uh, probably, in my opinion, the two best players in the region, and then bringing over one of, if not the best player from another region. It's on paper, obviously, we're really excited, but I, I know. Uh, We've got to temper expectations. Yeah, you, you know, it, we are, I will say, we are going into SI with about a month and a week of practice. And I think our practice has been good, but you know, it is, it is a process like anything else. And obviously we're excited for what we think it, it can do, but. So this one's for the players. So as we go into next year, obviously we know the teams are going to be playing against 
Is there any teams there that you th that you think are, would give you an issue? For so NA? I, I actually think the only team that would give us an issue is DZ because they are. I can't. I can't. Because well, when any. you played in Europe, what did you? Th which which uh, is that the team you hated playing against the most? When you played on G two and you played against NA teams. No, they were just boring. Like they just. Yeah, DZ yeah, I, played I, very, I feel like very I, I feel like I'm just playing a waiting simulator when I play them. Like, I'm just waiting around two minutes thirty. Oh, yeah. finally some action. Like they they force you to to be bored so you make a mistake is what I think they play. But yeah, their DZ is like an extremely boring team. I think. NA, that's probably the only team that plays like that. I mean, every other team plays like either very aggressive or they just play like they're, they're just bad. So you, you just beat them a lot easier. But DZ just don't do anything. I think DZ... Yeah. They DZ, are a good team, though. Yeah, yeah, DZ are good. They have good players, obviously. I think DZ tried to play the meta of like being fast and that kind of thing, and they just it didn't fit them. So now they kind of play the opposite of the meta where they're like slow and lethargic and they just like, like Ben said, kind of wait for you to do something. Um, but I think it's interesting that we kind of feel like they're a hard team to play because like towards the end of our career, I remember we had that span where we could never beat them. Oh, yeah. And then they got Canadian and they could like, they could never beat us in NAL finals I remember what like was through that the season. What was that match where it was there? It was... Easily shooting through the floor. Yeah, we had oh. we were last map, last round against them to qualify the for the like expression. online major, yeah. and uh, they beat us. But like, it, it was like a lot. It was like a year of them not being able to. Was it just pause? Yeah, it was like a year of us not being able to beat Flash them, match. and then a year of them not being able to beat us. So I think oh. that's and and we did crush them in NAL this last stage. Yeah. So I guess we'll see because sometimes, um, you know. Certain people on DZ and maybe some others like to play better in scrims. There's only one team I get nervous about playing against. Every time. It's Mirage. It's Mirage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like this. <laughs> I mean, we, the thing is, I think we've played those guys like three stages where they, it was our major game. Like, it was a major. The gatekeepers, bro. Yeah. Just any time. It was Mirage last It was, last was day. always our last match, if not like our second to last match. Were you and, nervous in that match? No, but I mean, like, these guys are just... The, the, the whole season, these guys don't do anything. They're all either barely positive or just getting shit on. And then we play against these guys, and I hold tab, and some of these guys have, like, 15 kills or 12 kills, and it's just, like, they've just... I remember, you know, like, literally the first stage that we played. Remember, we were in first place. Yeah, oh, all I the way into oh, the last game. I remember. And they beat us in the last game. And that game cost us, like, it didn't matter in terms, because there was no uh, major at the time because of COVID, it, yeah. but it was SI points, and it cost money. us, like, $30,000. We literally lost $30,000 because of Benji Mula. You know, he literally, he, he went, like, 15 and, like, two or something. It was, like, it was absurd. But, I mean, that's just an example. Yeah, Mirage. Oh, is another good question. Did, you, did either of you ever beat him? We only, played played them once. <laughs> we only played them once. Twice. We should have, though. Twice. We Twice. should have beat them. Oh, yeah, I mean, Twice. I guess two bets. But there was no air conditioning, so it doesn't count. We should well, have beat he had no twice. air conditioning either. He's used yeah. to it. He's used to it. No, that was, no, Berlin was a joke. It was, <laughs> it was, it was literally <laughs> I mean, the worst event. I wasn't it was there. horrible. Yeah, you I wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> Was it that? Was it really that hot? Because I've seen photos of Super. Did, he like he was mad. You know, what, Darren, my, when he said the skate fell off my mouse, I that had to play the entire event with only three mouse feet because my arm was so sweaty that it got on my mouse pad How and then it's... sweat that? Because it was hot! <laughs> and I'm not in good shape, Darren! So uh, my <laughs> arm is so sweaty, out the balls. mouse feet just falls <laughs> off my mouse and it's so wet, it just loses all like the sticky ability. So I played the entire tournament with three mouse feet. That was insane. So <laughs> it, was, it was bad. Under, under better conditions, we definitely beat them. We definitely exchanged at least a map. Yes, we do. We should have beat you on theme park. Uh, you have that run. comeback perfectly. Yeah, all right. I mean, I good. think our, our team was better than their team, but it's also like, while I think we were trying, because, you know, obviously they knew I was retiring, I think we were trying to, like, obviously do well in that instance to, like, because they don't want me to go out like that. But at the same time, I think it was like, I think we did put more pressure on ourselves than we needed to because of that. And I think we just didn't play, like, up to how we played. And individually, yeah. I think we were playing just a bit better as well. Well, I was, whole, I would, like, I actually played pretty decent in NAL that stage. And then at the major, I was, like, negative 50. 
But in NAL, that was like the best stage I had had in like two years. Oh, yeah. Like the three of the last four games, I had like double digit kills and I MVP two of them. And then I went there playing with three mouse feet and I was getting like one kill. But that's when you MVP'd Gunner, right? Yeah, yeah we <laughs> eliminated that shitter back there. <laughs> Gunner's currently on the air. Oh, that's what I effort. said, remember? I said, we might, what did I say? We, we'll never, we might lose to Knicks, but we'll never lose to Gunner. And, and it's then, true because we we'll never him. lose to Gunner. Yeah, we yeah. can never lose no, to Gunner. No, we could sell him. Yeah, just to never lose to him again. <laughs> I, I actually have a question. Why didn't you pick up Nightmare Knicks? Uh, we, I mean, we're like like we were talking about earlier, we're more of a small club. That's big money. That's more of a G2 You can't player. really even contact him, Nightmare I don't think. Knicks. I don't think we'd be able to contact him. Outside of the team, then, if we're looking at NAL, I just want to go back to NAL because I'm thinking about next year and the, the competition as we go back in. Because I don't want to think too much about SI because I'll start getting nervous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know me and you will go, me and Seth are only going to be at SI if they get through group stages. Yeah. And like normally, uh, people be sitting at group stage, I'm, like, I'm nervous as all hell, I don't know why. I it's mean, just a we, Sonics thing. If we don't make it out of group stages, mm. there might not be a rainbow team anymore because I would lose my fucking mind. <laughs> I'm with that. I'm with we that. Got, if, like, this team, in my opinion, is way better than the last team. And we got top six. So if we don't even make it out of groups, I have to come back. <laughs> that's like you I just to, don't understand. You have to buy yeah, another mouse foot from yeah. somewhere. I, I, at <laughs> that well, point, I just would lose my shit. That's it. Get get Gumpy slabbing yeah. Jason Liu. Yeah, Lauren on the phone. Yeah, where's Avian? What's he doing now? Playing collegiate, with right? Ice cold in Rainbow Six. <laughs> uh, that's funny because the building we're sitting in right now is a land center that we built in in Harrisburg. The players used to live above this, and this was just used like an empty. The last time I was here, because obviously uh, I just moved back to Harrisburg since now I'm the general manager, I'm not a player. And like you said, when we played out of Harrisburg, I lived above this. And this was an empty room. And there was like a leak, so there was like a little <laughs> bucket. And I remember coming in here and having to like record content. This, is, like, a, this is like a content space. Yeah, room, like if you, if you guys go back on our YouTube channel and watch like the video where it's like me and Iconic sitting on a couch. In here, yeah. It was in oh, here, and it looks like, it's like the weirdest video you'll ever see. Like I wish we could just delete that one. But it was just in here, and it's like covered with like aluminum foil like we're in an insane asylum. It, it's a classic video. Yeah. And now we're, uh, now it's. Well, now it looks pretty decent. Yeah, I did a good job. I did all this myself. Yeah, handy, yeah. handyman Darren. Yep, I built all those chairs. Yep. So, yeah, that was, I mean, that feels like a, a lifetime ago, obviously. And then, you know, now we, we're here. So I want to go back to the NA before we go. Is there any player, forget teams, then let's go player. Who do you think is the best player in NA that isn't on this team? I know I'm, who curious to see, I'm curious to see who you think, because you're. You're coming from EU, so I, I'm curious to see like who. I want to get pissed off if he says somebody ridiculous. Yeah, I think you guys know who I'm going to say because I don't really think like my experience in the scrims at least has not been like too good with like players. I think the only players. Well, you've been scrimming on like a hundred plus ping too. Yeah, like I think the only players that really have given me a little bit of trouble is I think one of them is Nuez. I think just because I think he's, he's yeah he's got really good aim, good mechanics. How does that make you feel? Like one okay. Yeah, Nurse is good. Okay. He, he, he would be like, I judge people by if they would, if they're good enough to ever be on the Sonics or not. Oh, right. Okay. Newer's like, he's on the threshold. He's, that's fine. What about you, Pablo? Um, Benji, Dexter. Benji, for sure. Probably. And Scrims. <laughs> and Scrims. <laughs> no, but. I feel like probably maybe Newer's. I feel like there's not a lot of other players are consistent. I feel like players have. I think a lot of players in NA lack consistency. So, and I feel like Newers is always, you know, holding his own or doing, having like really good games. Yeah, I, I think Newers is really good, obviously, mechanically. I think it is easy to just say Newers because his jo he plays a role where his job is just to get kills. So okay. it's easy to be like, this guy gets a lot of kills. Personally, I would say NJR. I think NJR is really good, and he doesn't really play a role a lot of the time. He always talks about his hiding. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I, I would have said one of them, but I, I think yeah. they're not like good right now. Yeah, like I would have said like Pam, like Pam, but you like Pam was last good of, too. The, the first major last year, like he played the best there, but I haven't really seen. Yeah, him I, I think NJR since. is like really underrated I by say, most people. I think he's a sleeper for sure. I think NJR is really good. He he's also plays internationally really well too. Mm. So I think that. NGR is definitely a sleeper. Do you find it, because obviously, I mean, Ben, you've probably played a lot more 
Has he played a lot more events than you, I'd guess, internationally? Yeah. Yeah. He's been playing a, a bit, a lot, well, a bit yeah. longer. Do you find it, uh, obviously you're way more experienced than Pablo than Pablo, do you find it more nerve-wracking out there on stage, or do you prefer it? Um, well, I, I like playing, I love playing international teams. I feel like it's a lot easier since, like, you're playing a team that, like, doesn't really understand you that well. Like, even if they watch your matches and, you know, they try to look at, like, your tendencies here and there, I feel like it's always just so easy to play international teams. I think... Easy? Yeah. I've got some results that say otherwise. No. <laughs> well, Pablo personally did good okay. at those events, to be fair. No, yeah. I, I just think, I just think like, the international teams are just way easier than playing in A teams. Like, I'd much rather play any international team than Mirage. Because they don't know what you're doing. Like, if you're scrimming, <laughs> yeah. like, this probably, this problem occurs for them in scrims where it's like, if you scrim Mirage 10 times, you might beat the shit out of them the first six times. But the last four times where you're scrimming all the same maps, all of a sudden you're playing like the Monstars. And it's because they just, at some, <laughs> Space like at some point, it's yeah, so, like dude. all the teams know each other so well, where it's like if you're going to Invitational or a major event, you're playing international teams, the shit that you can't get away with anymore in NA because everybody knows you do it, you can get away with again. Right. Yeah. And that's like, that's why I would say it could be easier, but it's also harder because the players are better, like right, at the right, international, yeah. like that's one way that I look at trying to measure players is, and to be honest, why I think it's like an upgrade with Kansan to Ben is Kansan and, you know, has always been one of the best players in NA without a doubt. But when we go to the international events, he doesn't necessarily replicate that same dominance in NA. Whereas if you look at like all time stats with Ben, he's one of the highest rated players of all time internationally. So I think there's like... That's quite the accolade. So I, I do think there is something to be said about people who are comfortable playing internationally. And obviously, Kansan, the last event, played really well. I think he's like plus seven or something. And as you, you know, he's super... Ben is super experienced. Evan was gaining that experience. So as you go, you get more comfortable. But, you know, that is something that I think differentiates a lot of people is people who can just play regionally or people who are comfortable enough to... I don't want to say like shy away from the um, bright lights or something, but just who know, who know the way they play works when they're playing competition they're not as used to. Well, so who's the best player you ever played against? All three of you can answer this question because you've played. Who's the Shaiko. best? Shaiko. Yeah. Go ahead, Ben. I don't know. I would say Shaiko, but I feel like when it was me and him, it was a bit on and off. Like, it's either me playing good or him playing good, you know? So I can't really, I don't know, like... I'm trying to think. For mine, I think it had to be Shaq as well. I think, oh. I think every time we played BDS, I mean, if you even want to count uh, the first Sweden, the first time we played him in Sweden, I mean, we played against him, we just got rolled. But it, it always feels like Shaq is always, if, I don't know, Shaq just always has a good game, you know? And yeah. it's just, I remember when we played BDS in Mexico, and this was like our first international event, like, at, like ever. This was like last year. And we played against BDS, and I was just sitting, like, holding a little pixel in garage on consulate, like, at the door. And I just see, like, a little, like, the door frame's, like, here, and I just see somebody go, like, and a nade just flies in my face and kills me. And I'm like, I'm dead in sight. I fucking don't know how. Like, the, he, he's just different than I would say, like, the majority. Yeah, I mean, that didn't, that didn't help. But, yeah, I just think that he's, like, he's mechanically gifted. Yeah, almost if you want to say with, like, newers being so good because he's, like, mechanically gifted, it's like Shaco's on an even, like. He's, like, final bar. He, he's, final bar. Yeah, he has the best movement in this game. Yeah. Like, I think his aim is, like, normal pro aim. But, like, his, his mechanics, like moving around like he's quick beats all of this stuff like well now that i retired his move. did you know that i actually retired owning like a 14 to 8 like advantage and killing him yeah actually killed I, my theory on that is because he's so good like <laughs> movement wise <laughs> like <laughs> his movement is so good and he's like used to people like doing all this and i'm just like running at him like this that he's never ready for it for me to just full run at him so he, it's just like I'm. I was like so bad mechanically that it confused him. Like he didn't know what to do. Like a, like it was like a small child. Like, what? Like, why, why is this guy just full swinging the hallway? This guy's just running at me. The old man bumbling through the hallways. He's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, I definitely do. Yeah, think I probably, I I probably would say him as well. Yeah. yeah. I I've, I've never played against him. Joe bro was pretty good when I played. Yeah, you did play against Joe. So. <laughs> 
Uh, so obviously we put, I mean, the fans probably want to know, we, we, obviously we've invested more as we, if you look at our journey from, from day one, yeah. Sonics, it's crazy to think about where we were to where we to are. Now. I mean, obviously we love Rainbow Six. We've, you know, we've moved up and you know, even what, two years ago, we were not even competing to, I mean, when I joined the org, about four years ago oh, now. Yeah, we've been here for... Four it? years yeah. ago, we came here as a Challenger League team, and there, it was me, Lauren, Avian, Ghost, Nip. and Nep. And then we got in the league, and we were just... We, we managed to make it out of Challenger League, but we were just clearly, like, out... We didn't have enough talent. So then we brought in Goffy and Slevin. First, you, first you, I, I, I do The this. first international first transfer. transfer. So we bring them in. And that tells you we were serious from the start, even when our team wasn't that good, trying to do things like bring in international players when that had never been done. Mm -hmm. And then they couldn't play, basically. So we had to just <laughs> play that whole stage. I blocked that from that. For context behind that, that, that visa process, this is before we found Genie, who is a Genie when it comes to, to getting these visas. Um, that visa process, I never worked so hard on something with Luke. Me and Luke, I was reading international law at times, yeah. trying to figure it out, because our lawyer that we, we were using had no idea how to get them in the country. Yeah. Like, he just, the, the, and the agent we had just like, just would not recognize esports as anything. We worked round the clock, and then it was like, we have their visas approved, like, and the guy wanted to see like the screenshot. Yeah. I was like, oh my <laughs> God, just let them play. Yeah, and then obviously, that original roster didn't necessarily work out the way we wanted, but we had like more of a core then because mm -hmm. we wanted to, you know, they didn't really get a fair shot with that roster. So obviously, Lauren ended up getting replaced with easily, and we didn't even originally plan to replace Nep, but Nep. that kind of just Nep just stopped wanting to play. Nep was Frank Sinatra, wasn't he? he yeah, wanted to retire all he just didn't want to play. <laughs> I mean, I remember now, we qualified, back. like, think about how crazy this yeah, is. We played an entire, like, year, because back then, Challenger League was, like, the whole year. We played the entire year, qualified for Pro League, and then after we qualified, literally, like, the same day, Nep's like, I think I want to retire. I was like, you just played the whole year to make Pro League, you know, <laughs> getting, insane getting paid. You get paid, like, you know, obviously, you get paid a less amount. You don't want to, like, see what happens. So we had, like, I'm always convincing people to, like, not retire. I think, I think you had a conversation with multiple conversations with Nep on not retire. Yeah, like three times I had to tell him not to retire. <laughs> Don't retire, Nep. And then like, All right, go on, so we bring easily in for Lauren and then Iconic. Well, eventually. Did, where did we find Iconic from? That, I can't remember that. So Iconic had just turned 18 and we actually, this is interesting because we tried out Richie, we tried out Iconic and we tried out uh, NJR. Oh, we, yeah, okay. And uh, we him. wanted Richie, but Richie did not want to play with easily, basically. And so... Should get him in. He's right back there and ask him why. Talks yeah. Like, it's uh, talk. Oh, he said, for those who didn't hear, he said that team was too good for him. Yeah, so... <laughs> or something along the opposite of that. Yeah, so, I mean, to be fair, he didn't join the team that got eighth while well, we were fifth. But. I so, mean, that is certainly true. He did get eighth. That's good. Hey, who's the only team we beat? Go back to playing Tarkov. <laughs> anyway, ignore the, ignore the background noise. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a pretty long process, and obviously we kept bringing people in and out, and then we had that team where we got fifth both times. We never got to play the team that was in fourth, so I, I, thought, yeah, I still think to oxygen. that day we would have beat Oxygen. We would have beat Oxygen. But we never got to play them. We always had to play Dark Zero, and we just couldn't beat Dark Zero. Dark Zero, yeah. And that was then, a good format. And then we squad wiped them. And then brought in these guys. Squad and now we're two more away from another squad. <laughs> <laughs> if we follow in the cycles. Yeah. <laughs> if we're following the cycles, we might have to go That's that way. Two, two away. So, it's like I said, we get, so we end up at this point. So now, me and Seth, obviously, have built this to where it is now. What's the goal now? It's got to be. I know what my goal is. I'm not going to say for the sole fact of jinxing anything but oh we i mean we would like to build a championship winning team yeah that's it there you go, there you go. which way. championship now we won nal already and that was great and we consider that a good achievement but obviously that doesn't carry the same weight as winning an international so i think our goal organizationally is to win an international tournament whether it's si or major or something we just want to win things and obviously 
I think we have a roster that is capable of doing so, how long it takes to do so, uh, you know, how quick the team gets to playing with each other and, you know, feeling comfortable in that aspect. That, I guess, remains to be told, but... Would you agree with that, Ben? Have you come here to win championships for North America? He just came yeah, here definitely. to check out America. He's come here, come here to <laughs> bring some success, to North, you know, yeah. some more success. Mind you, NA's pretty successful in Rainbow Six, isn't it, compared to... Yeah, I thought that was a, a like a female staring through the window there, and that's actually Gunner. Oh, that's long hair. <laughs> All right, let, let's let Gunner in. Let's have a guest appearance from the young. I man. thought that was some lady staring through the door, and it's just Gunner with long hair. Is some hot? We thought you were a homeless person. Did you get the baggage? Uh, yeah, I got both. Both? Cool. Hey, Ben, you got clothes. <laughs> Am I good to walk through? Yeah, go ahead. We won't. We won't cut. We won't even yeah, cut this out. What do you mean, not to, like, to deliver them? Well, you saved them a job. Yeah. <laughs> well, well you saved them a nice trip. So we, everyone flew in yesterday for this boot camp, because we are boot camping at this facility for, for SI. And I don't think we've had so many things go wrong in one day. So we, me and Seth are already here because we live here. What happened to you? Um, so I had a flight originally that I was on my way to. Everything was ready, set and everything. And we got into a car crash, right? This, I assume it was a small car. It was. It was. Because nobody was, told me. I just said Pablo's in a car crash. I'm like, is Pablo okay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just was, go. <laughs> Pablo's gonna be late. He was in a wreck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was a small. And then, I mean, it was too late by the time I got there. So I showed up and I was like, you know, what what am I gonna do? Like, when's the next flight to here? And um, there was no flights to Harrisburg for another like four days. So I was like, okay, and I started, you know, naming a whole bunch of areas close by that I could like Uber from, and the only closest one that would be the same day was Washington, uh, D.C. So I got to Washington, D.C. at like 12:40, and then I ended up I took the Uber ride at like 1:30 because it took forever to get my. I thought ride. you took. I thought you had to take a connecting flight from Washington, D.C. You took an Uber. How much was that Uber? 1:40. It was only $140 yeah, to that's Uber. Not, that's not bad. What? what? That's cheaper than a plane flight. That's the new way of travel. When he said one, I was like, 1400 How How is that so cheap? That's like cheaper than a ticket from a plane. Um, like I had to drive back? Yeah. It was like, I don't know how long. It was like two hours, I think, two hours. I, I'm not that. even joking. I think that would, is cheaper than like a what? plane ticket. Like I, in gas? You know, in Stansted, when I have to take a... Uber back from there. That's an hour away from my house, and that's a hundred, like thirty pounds. That's like hundred and seventy. Maybe because it was like so late. There's just like no business. So it gets no away. Yeah, one hundred and forty dollars. Are you sure? Swear to God. I'm sure, that wasn't the tip. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it was. No, and I, I requested an Uber, and like two people canceled. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, surprise. I, yeah. I Nobody wants to drive to Harrisburg at two a.m. on a on a whatever day. Yeah. So then I, I ended up getting to Harrisburg in the uh, Airbnb at 4 a.m. And then that poor person has to drive back for $140. Yeah. Plus well, they get about half of that. So they get for 70 bucks. And then the gas. I think Uber like covers your gas. Anywho. So that happened. What happened to you, Ben? Because that was one. So we had many things going on. Yeah, that was one of them. My, my flight was just delayed uh, delayed because of the weather. Just foggy, sunny air, airplane for an hour. Then I almost missed my connecting flight because of it. And then my, my luggage didn't turn up. Well, it wasn't just your luggage didn't turn up. We, I went going to the airport to pick him up and with, with Luke and Coy. And we, we sat there for 30 minutes while they repaired the maintenance. The, the oh, yeah, carousel the was broken. So they, had to re we, they were fixing it. So we waited 30 minutes for them to fix it for the bags to come out. And then the bag wasn't even there. <laughs> but here's the kicker. Ben didn't charge his phone because his plane didn't have a charger on it. He already had an email on his phone saying his bag was going to be delayed. So technically, we stood there for an hour for no reason. Even nothing. <laughs> yeah. And as you've seen, as Gunner just walked in, they just went to the airport to pick his bags up because they finally... Yeah, Gunner's flight got canceled because he was on a plane where the wing was broken or something. Okay, yep. And then they deplaned him, and he had a flight to Dallas. And he was telling us the whole time that he wouldn't even be able to fly in until today now. Yeah. And I guess he like made it last second they were like closing the he door running. it's like straight out of a movie and gunner's like diving for the door no and, and then, then geo wait no no you're missing the best part of gunner's okay. story 
Gunnar then got an Uber to the Airbnb. Yeah. And it dropped him off not where the Uber was. I mean, that's just a Gunner away. moment. I feel like he just did something Gunner, wrong. Gunner was just standing in the middle of some alleyway in somewhere near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, with nothing but a backpack on because his luggage got lost. That, that is probably the most Gunner moment ever, though. And then Richie had to go get in an Uber and go pick him up. Yeah. Where, we don't even still to this day. Where, where was he? Oh, he's in Steelton? Yeah, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you made it, Gunner. So yeah, he lost so he lost his baggage and he got dropped off at somewhere. Did you put the address in the eye? No, he it's didn't. A, he it's didn't. definitely his fault. Yeah, yeah it's definitely his fault. The whole road was still over. Geo had maybe the most ridiculous of all though. Geo. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Geo flew from Texas, so he's in the Philadelphia airport, and yesterday I'm co-streaming the SSG TSM game. Mm-hmm. He's sitting at his gate, and I don't know if he wasn't connected to the internet or what happened, but his ticket never changed on his phone. Uh-huh. So he's sitting at the gate, typing in my chat, like making fun of, you know, praying yeah, he, on everyone's he was, he was downfall. Shit, yeah. <laughs> and he missed his flight while sitting in the airport at the gate. So Gio is such a hater that he literally <laughs> missed his flight because he was busy yeah. hating oh, while funny. in the airport. That's like... Next level. So he also had to Uber because he's such a moron. Where did he Uber from? From Philadelphia. Gio, uh, how much was your Uber? Uh, Apparently. Everything's on. <laughs> Uber, Uber just have a flat rate of hey, $140. Where are you going? We'll take you anywhere you want. 140 <laughs> <laughs> There's a flat in New York City, 140 <laughs> Done. It's, a, it's cheaper to take it. If you're, if you're listening to this, po- this podcast, <laughs> video casting, Whatever one is. thing we've learned is that if you were looking at plane flights, check out Uber because it's, it's cheaper. 140 That's all it is. Oh, yeah. Take you anywhere you need. All right. Well... Uh, so eventually everyone got here, yeah. and it was just like, and we just dealt with the whole Valorant heartbreak and the. Yeah, we don't talk about that. We don't that. talk about that on this anyway. And the, and the Rocket League absolute. Just torture. Just. <laughs> and then all this started happening, and I was just like, this is already cursed. Yep. So there it is. To touch on the quals, I think. I, I had it predicted that SSU was going to win. I think that they were definitely the best team there. Um, even though almost every matchup could have gone other way, I think SSU were like two rounds away from losing to Mirage, and then TSM were uh, down six four to lose as well in the first round. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, honestly, I feel like any team could have ended up in like anywhere, but I did think that SSU at the end of it was going to come. I just think they were like the strongest team heading in. Um, we did we did scrim most teams, like I said, except for TSM. And I'd say like most of them felt kind of the same, but um, I just kind of felt like SSG, SSG were just not going to lose that qual, honestly. Is that the team you wanted to qualify, or did you want reality? I wanted reality TV to qualify. I think it would have been fun to see reality yeah, TV Yeah, it would have been funny to see Mr. B, but I think we're all obviously rooting for Xander yeah, to make it, because he deserved to make it, because he was still part of the team this year. That's sad, that's true. He deserves to make it. Yeah. I, I thought TSM was going to make it, just because I had seen the scrims with reality TV and Mirage and SSG. And I thought they were basically all three the same. Like, I didn't think any of them were clearly better than the other, besides Mirage when they're in a scrim attitude. But, so I kind of figured that maybe TSM were slightly better, but it didn't turn out that way. So, going into SI, obviously, all of us have played an SI before, bar Gunner. And you. And me. Yeah. Well, I don't play video games. I'm a Hearthstone player. Big, it's a, it's a bigger brain. Yeah, sport, I can't right? comprehend no. that. <laughs> it's honestly, it's tough. Yeah. Um, so going into it, who do you think are the favorites? Which, if you had to say who's the favorites going into SI, give me your top three. W7M. Yep. Phase and BDS. Okay. Can't we can't be one of them either, by the way. No, no. Well, jokes. liquid. Well, I have four. Liquid as well. They're always favorite. I'll say W7M, BDS, and I don't know. I mean, I want to say FaZe, but... Their roster changes make that questionable because yeah. they replaced Cameraman. Obviously, we haven't seen them play without him. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think that he's the reason that... I think what makes FaZe so good is their play style, and a lot of people think that Cameraman is the reason they have that play style. I'm not saying that's necessarily true, but right. that's just the thought behind it. So I'm curious to see like how they 
what they look like without him. Well, we've screamed PB with cameraman playstyle, and they didn't go well, did they? Yeah, I don't. Well, yeah, like I said, I don't know. I think Faze is too shaky to call it a favorite. Um, so I don't know. Third would be hard. I think maybe I want to say Liquid, but. No, yeah. NA, no NA teams. I know we can't pick ourselves, but not because we don't back another NA team to do it. What, other, what NA teams really? Well, OXG, I think the problem with us picking an NA team is I think we're the best NA team. So we can't, like, in your, in your own mind, you can't pick a team worse than you that's going to win SI. Yeah, feels if good. I was going to say one NA team has a chance, I actually would say OXG. Oh, I yeah. I think they have, like, a really talented roster. You know, I will say, like, for Sweater... This is actually his first international event because they never made a major because Sweater joined the team and they were shit, but they got better. Because they, they bought a Ferrari and drove it like a Fiat. Yeah, so, I mean, they're, they're kind of like an interesting team to me. Uh, I think Troy's teams at international events are always a threat. He just seems to have a better international understanding than like regionally, to be honest. Um, I think Astralis are just shit with helmet head. That's a team that, to be Who's honest, Helmet? their new Hard player is named Helmet Head. His name was Hard Hat. Hard Hat. Yeah. Spiff. Helmet Wait, what? So his name what is, have I missed? His name is Spiff, right. but Astralis are in silly, goofy moods. So his name was Hard Hat, but I call him Helmet Head. <laughs> okay. And that guy is not very good. But by the way, if you watch this, Kansan is better and available. Um, DP Fire was the glue. Yeah, so Astralis don't look as good right now. Have you scrimmed them? Yeah. 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 Oh. Scrimmed them quite a few times. Yeah. I, uh, and they beat us like one map on game day settings and out of like... With no bench. Yeah. <laughs> out of like 12. Yeah, I, I do think so. So they're strong. <laughs> they're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Once we go out and win it now, yeah. we just look like idiots. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, do th I do agree with him though. I think OXG has been the other like team that's given us like the hardest time in scrims. That, and... I mean, if you look at their roster, like on paper, I th I do think they have pretty talented individuals, and um, Vert's like a key player for them. Yeah, I do. Because when Vert's on and like scrims, because like I think people would probably say our team, at least in NA, is the strongest like mechanically. Well, maybe like uh, M80 or Matey, whatever. Mate now. zero. Mate zero now. Mate zero. Um, so when Vert's like on, that's a team that can match us like firepower wise, I would say. Yeah. But he's kind of he's, he's matching up with Fox. Well, Fox and Fox and like Geo are like even trade. Well, Geo was telling me how he's a great in entry player. Geo has been dancing on players recently in scrims. Yeah, Geo does it all. I've seen that man play Castle. Geo Geo gets down with it. I will say that Geo. Geo's <laughs> fearless. Geo gets unleashed. We have Geo. We know whenever we want to unleash Geo, we just do it. Yeah. Geo's our secret weapon. He, he has these. He's just like you like take the muzzle off. Yeah. Him. <laughs> Go. Muzzle off. Go get him. We just throw him on it's Ash like he, and we just let him run around. It's like he has an ult. He says, "Guys, I'm going on Ash's round. No questions asked. You just say it, and then he gets he does his job. Doctor yeah. Jacklin, yeah. Mister Hyde. He just put, crazy. put the leash back on. Go on. <laughs> back. In. Take the bomb. All right. So I I mean I don't want to, this to go on forever and ever and ever. Uh, so we did put a tweet out for some fan questions. Mm -hmm. So we will answer some fan questions as a group. We will probably do another one of these at some point. At least me and Seth will be doing a lot more, can do a lot more content together because we now live in the same space. Are you a one trick player? I guess so. It was not, it was not to my knowledge that I was, but. I guess, uh, I guess we should ask Ben, are you, are you, have you come to? Is this, like come a, to <laughs> is this a serious tweet or is he joking? He's joking. Okay, because I was about to roast him. <laughs> I had to make sure I didn't need to just like cook this guy real quick. Because I was about to say, there's no way this guy's talking shit to Pablo. You should cook him. Let's hear it. Doki is shit. Oh, he, he's not bad. No, he's shit. He's inconsistent. He plays that's like his, a moron. His teammate. No, it's not. What? Pablo is his teammate. Uh, I think for me, it's just like, uh, from what I see, it's like the team vibe is much better than what I had previously at G2. Um, I feel like as well, like, the guys here were more committed to play as a team and not as individuals and they kind of wanted to make everyone better and that's kind of how I envisioned myself like I wanted to come and help the team become better not just make myself better. you know I wanted to come in and definitely try and win internationals which I have uh, like really high hopes for so yeah I think like I wasn't even bothered about the roles like 
what what they wanted to play. What, can't have two you can't have two lurkers. You can't, you can't have, have two lurkers. lurkers. What is he going to play now? What Every day. There's someone like Gio in. He's standing outside looking lost. Well, we, uh, you can come through, Gio, because we're going to ask you a question as you pass through. Uh, I've just been told you're an absolutely nasty Ash player yes, from time to time. I'm the best Ash you have to go around this way. You can go whichever way you want. Unless you can, can squeeze fit. through there. I'm the best to ever do it. Is that, if you couldn't hear that, he's the best to ever do it. What do you think then of, to Alex's question? Well, I think it's... Um, I think vibes. Yeah, I think vibes and how hard it is to like accommodate to a player will all depend on that player and like the environment. I think Ben was like very easy to mold into like our environment. I think he's not far off of like our personality or like play style either. I think he like fit really well into our play style. And I think it was just very easy to, you know, it almost feels like we've been together longer than... However long we've been. We together. also like the team um, try like normally for a player of Ben's caliber. Obviously, we wouldn't like trial them. We just know like Gio. We just you know you know they're good. But you know when you're moving a player literally across the ocean, you want to be sure, especially because you know whatever roles you want to make sure everybody's comfortable. So we had like a few trial scrims with Ben just to make sure that everybody was still comfortable and that it was something that we wanted to commit to, and obviously uh, it is. So it's, it's not like we just picked up Ben and we were like, hey, uh, how's your thermite looking or something? Like, yeah. you know, we, we already knew what we were going to do if we were able to get him, which we were able to. Yeah. It's, it's funny that you say vibe because all three of you mentioned vibes there, and obviously vibes seems to be very, very important. I guess because it's such, I mean, I'm... I have a traditional like soccer background, so my, I played in much. I know players. exactly what you're going to say because yeah. I'm the exact same. And I I'm never, the exact I, same. for me, I was never. I was the captain of the team, and for me, vibes were fine. But I didn't care who I played with. All I cared about was the result. Yeah. All I cared that people put the effort in and got the result. But it seems like in esports, it's like it's a lot more because it's maybe because it's such smaller squads and you spend a lot more time together. Yeah. I, I think guess. this generation as well because because well, it's the same yeah. in football. Like I'm not. I'm quite, I'm quite young still. What so. position do you play? Centre back. Okay, you took centre back. Yeah, I used to. I was captain. Of, yeah, I would play centre mid or centre back, whatever. Like, but uh, I used to be the same. I'd be the captain. You know, obviously you'd have a laugh and you'd be like friends, but it's not like your serious friendship. You know, it's still like you want. To, you're all there to win and become good. And I think that's the same in esports. But people now, for some reason, if you give criticism that uh, they don't like hearing, yeah. then it's a different story. And they, that's to me, it's like you kind of have to pretend to give them Step feedback. on eggshells. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, I, that's I, what I feel like in G2. I found that weird here, you see, because like you do have to stick, kind of, it, maybe it is because it's younger people, whatever, because I used to get I used to get drilled. At I used to get, my coach would stand in my face, scream I in mean, my face. And you'd even for me, listen. playing like over the course of time, I mean, you saw how oh, I was yeah, with oh, the yeah. original team. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember. I'd be sitting in my office because my office was above. I'm like, yeah. oh, you'd hear, you, you didn't hear anything, and you just screaming. Yeah, I mean, even over time, I kind of never uh, on match day though. Oh, I never yell a match. Never, never blame anybody. Scrims. Well, practice is meant to be. Avian, what are you doing? Yeah, but even like with the new guys, you could ask them. I don't think I have. I don't think the entire time I was on the team, I yelled at anybody. Yeah, never. Like, I do think. Unfortunately, like, we didn't experience it. Yeah, I think. Um, I think I always underrated vibes to like the end of my career. Mm -hmm. And obviously they are important because you want people like every, like you're not doing a, you know, you're athletes, but you're not doing a physical activity. It's all like, you're just sitting there together talking and stuff. Like you have to, you have to t be talking to each other constantly. You're around each other all the time. You're playing the game all the time. And, and to be honest, it's also mainly younger people. Mm -hmm. And it, it's important to not just like, I think it's just you, the amount of time. You, you don't want people getting down. You don't want people, like, the wrong kind of emotions can make people play worse, that kind of thing. So that's why I always try to say, like, if, we, if it's not, like, a positive emotion or if it's not something that's, like, um, productive, I'll, like, I'd rather you have no emotion. Just don't do anything. <laughs> because, you, you know, if you're get, Like, I hate... The thing that I hate in most is hindsight, yep. which is, like, where something doesn't happen... Because you could do that literally every round of every like everything. You could always just be like, if we did this, that would have worked. If we did this, that would have worked. On, it's yeah. like, well, we didn't do it. We didn't say to do it, so let's move on. If we ever have that, if we ever see this thing again, we'll know what we need to do next time. But there's no point in talking about it now. We'll just know if it happens again. Yeah, hindsight is definitely the worst. Yeah, it just 
especially in the game of Siege, it's like, Siege is such a game where like the same scenario will never play out again. So if you say like, if we would have done that here, that's like, it doesn't matter. You just know what to do now, so. I'd say NA plays the exact same as EU, except in my opinion, I think people from NA just have better aim, whereas the EU people I think are just a little bit smarter. That's, that's, how I, <laughs> that's how I perceive it. These dumb Americans, man. <laughs> These dumb Americans with their stupid aim. <laughs> There's no such thing as a lurker role, in my yeah. opinion. Like, you don't just go, right, Grixie, you're going to go over here. You're just going to mute your mic and just walk <laughs> around the map. Like, that doesn't happen. It's like, yeah. when, you, when you do a role, it's a, it's a playmaking role. Like, you, you, you play off your teammates. You talk to your teammates. You ask your teammates, what do they need help with? This type of stuff. Like, I feel, I feel what like... What would you say, because I'm sure this is what some people are at wondering. What would you say the roles are now without Evan? I would say it's, uh, Richie's definitely the primary entry. And then I think after that, it's like either me or Gunner on secondary, but I'm more of a flex, I'd say. And then I'd say Pablo is more towards the flex role as well, but he's like, I'd say the third, fourth guy in that area. Yeah. I think Pablo, Pablo and Gio have made, well, and so I think Pablo, Gio, and Richie are essentially on the same roles. And then Gunner move to more of an aggressive role and then you have taken evan's role but you're not necessarily playing it the same as evan did because evan was more of a passive player whereas you're naturally more aggressive yeah. so i would say the only real role change is that gunner is now essentially an entry player whereas before he was like our secondary support and ben is playing the evan like flex role but um more aggressively. I mean, people say that yeah, I play yeah. really passive, but in my mind, I don't play passive. Is because when I was in G2, for example, going through the there. teams, it's like I would win my gunfights, and then if other people don't win their gunfights, oh, this guy's baiting, this guy's too passive. Like, well, I will say, I don't think I help that because obviously everybody <laughs> knows on my stream, I like to ham it up and all that kind of stuff. So I always do the, like the baiting counters, and to me, on stream, Last Alive is baiting. I don't care how it got there. <laughs> so, like, I think that probably is, like, some of it, but I don't, I don't care. Who's the biggest baiter on our team? Oh, Pablo. Yeah. <laughs> but is he baiting, or is he leading the world in raiding? You tell me. There's a joke to be said there, but I'm not going to say it on the podcast. <laughs> I guess I can say that I'm not. I think going into next year, it's looking great. I, I think we're going back to more of the, the roots of what Rainbow Six is good at, more events, mm -hmm. more international events, which I think, you know, what everybody, what we want, we want more competition. I love the, the, the domestic events, but as in all esports, the more events you can have that have teams from all over the world, the better it is. So, I'm Yeah, I mean, we just signed Pablo, uh, Ben, and Richie to two-year contracts in 2025, so obviously... I'd say we're not very concerned with the future. No, of I'm, actually, I'm actually more excited for 2023 than I was for 2022. So. I feel like it's just a lot of haters. Like people have been saying this game's going to die I for a while. I think the thing is, the game just, has been... It's just not a like, point, People aren't used to a game being successful for so long. Like if you look at Ubisoft's recent like, um, market postings, whatever, whatever they call that, the, this, Siege is still their most popular game by far and their most profitable. It's like seven years in. So people are like... How long can this game last? The truth is, the game will last as long as it's making money for Ubisoft. And people keep playing. And it's still their best, their number one most popular game. I think, the thing that annoys me is as well is people look at Steam. Oh. And they go, oh, the, the, the player count is low. But like, for me, and I know for a, a lot of other people, we don't play on Steam. Yeah, so you there's, play. Uh, there's probably so many more people. And con like, like they don't even console. factor in console. Like con yeah, console. Siege on console is one of the pop most got, popular hey, games. Got them all riled up, look at them all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> been around somebody just bad mouthed their game uh, my favorite part about the sonics uh i mean i built it from day one so everything we see around it i did and that's kind of a, a nice thing um and the people i've met along the way and you know i was my first soiree into a professional esports setting or well, not first sorry but first in a in a larger role um so everything seeing it now four years later to be where it is from where it was that's probably my favorite thing yeah i mean for me obviously it's i didn't build sonics but i've been here since essentially day one and i was thinking about this the other day it's like five years ago i was playing rainbow on era and i was making eight hundred dollars a month and you I'm know nine. 
and I was a player, <laughs> and now I'm the general manager of the org that I played for for the last four years, and I just purchased a house at the end of last year. It's like, in five years, for all that to ha like, if you would asked me five years ago what I would be doing something, like what I would be doing right now, it certainly wouldn't be anything like this. So I think it's just, you know, you you feel, obviously as a player um, who's now become general manager, for me it's like I feel like I've helped the organization grow a lot during that time, and I've always been very dedicated and supportive of the Sonics because, you know, I was on big orgs before the Sonics, and nobody treated me anywhere close to as good as the Sonics did. And that was even when we were a Challenger League team. Like, they shouldn't give a shit about us. And and it was always like a family environment, and that's kind of what I hope to continue going forward with, uh, you know, the family <laughs> so that, environment. That's why we brought you in to yeah. be a bit more mean. Me Apparently, I'm just too nice. <laughs> with uh, with some, some winning attitude. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, it's just, like, the safety that I have felt, like, to be a part of the Sonics, I think... You know, I've been only a part of two other orgs in the United, like Left Siege, and to have like a feeling like that's like insane because you literally wake up to one day you just get in a, in a call with somebody and you know you just like lose your job essentially. And with Sonics, like I feel like I, it's like a lot of safety, especially with um, the whole shit show going on right now with all these other orgs and teams leaving and teams having to find new orgs and everything. I think. Or like not getting paid. Yeah, they're not getting paid. I can go for some money. I wonder who that is. <laughs> save, you save some money. I got some car. <laughs> yeah, but up. yeah, I think Sonics, Sonics has just been by far the best. And obviously, Ben, you don't have to answer this because you've just got it. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, could say. I mean, yeah. I would say like just feeling welcomed. Okay. Like, that's, that's definitely nice. the nicest thing. Like, feels like you're at home already. You know, it feels like you've been in New York for like a year, and I've been here. Less than a month. They have a little so. bit of an advantage because, like, obviously, on the day-to-day -day basis, they more so deal with me as GM, and like I'm from this game. Mm -hmm. That is true. Where it's like, you know, like for Rocket League or something, they're like, yeah, "This guy is fucking crazy." Like, what, is, <laughs> what is he talking <laughs> about? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? Who is this psychopath on, the, yeah. on this call? Yeah. No, I mean, with the, the with the GM stuff. I mean, we spoke about you becoming GM probably two years before you retired. Yeah, I mean, remember initially the plan was I was going to become coach, and then I was mm. thinking, like, I don't think I'd be a great coach. I mean, you'd either be very, very good or, very, or everyone would hate playing for you. <laughs> no, they too. could hate playing for me and still be very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've been told to wrap it up. Uh, we will say big shout out to both Intel and ViewSonic because I wouldn't have been able to build this place if it wasn't for them. All the equipment that you see was... They support. provided the tools for they, you to build it. Hand, they did, hand. and, and, and <laughs> obviously oh zip chair. Actually, I actually did build the zip chairs myself, all 20 of them. It yep. took me a while, but if one of them falls over, blame. I know, don't look concerned, they're safe. I built that, yeah. <laughs> He's like, what did you say? Like, Look, you built these <laughs> by hand. Um, you know, great facility that we've got here, and you know, this is what it's great that we can use it for stuff like this, where the players have twenty four seven access to it. So, I will hopefully be at SI. Me and Seth yep. are planning to be at SI to cheer on the team, um, but we'll only be there for the, the what was it, the playoffs? Playoffs. But I do have a rule because I know a lot of you. You know, like I said earlier, people know me. You want to come up for an autograph or a picture? There's two rules. You gotta have your teeth brushed, and you gotta have shower. And you gotta be subbed. Because I don't. No stinky motherfuckers better come up to me. I'm gonna. And you gotta pissed. say please. I don't. Please. Really care. <laughs> you gotta have manners. I don't yes. really care about that. I, yeah, that's because I'm I'm a manners person. I always say please, thank you. Nothing worse than people coming up. I mean, I say please. I'm from the south. Can I have a picture? Please. No, you give it to me. <laughs> I would kind of, honestly, I would maybe no, think he's but, a, would he honestly, be a little bit of a dick if you were like, can I have a picture? And he was like, what do you say? What's the magic word? Manners don't man. cost anything. <laughs> manners make you for the man. Everyone in the UK knows this. Um, but yeah, I guess we're wrapping this up. So root for the Sonics at SI. If you don't root for the Sonics and you're this deep in the video, you are geo-levels of hater. So I appreciate you as well. <laughs>